So, our discussion time is coming to an end now. Uh, yeah, if, uh, thank you all. It was uh, quite, there were quite a lot of active discussions here. Um, <laughs> yeah, th thank you to everybody who, who participated. And I would like now to, uh, for, for the individual groups to come up and give a short summary of what they did. And prefer if you please could come here so the online participants can uh, see you uh, as well as hear you. And uh, yeah, I don't know, who should, we start? should we start with the group over there? On <laughs> okay, okay, you, you, you get a... Okay, we, 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 can, we can give a couple of more minutes, uh, maybe, uh, yeah. Uh, uh. Okay, okay. Well, all, all wants to... um, I added the link from the survey that Kit shared yesterday about the standards that people are, are using from Tadwig. Um, I think it's quite relevant and it came up in our discussion. Uh, so it's in the Google Doc in, in addition to Slack now. Thank you. Then um, maybe we start with the group over there. At the, Hannah, want to do the reporting? <laughs> As I opened my mouth in the wrong place, then, then <laughs> it's my duty. Yeah, so uh, let me check where to begin. So we are talking about implementation of mappings and how to publish and use these mappings uh, and, and the practical actual crosswalks uh, merging different kinds of uh, data sources with different kinds of uh, schemas and, and uh, using multiple mappings. Um, and. Uh, yeah, what mappings are people are already doing? So we discussed uh, that uh, Tadwig to outside uh, um, schemas uh, are necessary and needed. We we can easily manage what we already know, but then then we should look for examples that cross these these barriers, link from outside to Tadwig and and vice versa. And we named EML, DCAT, and Lido for possible easy examples of, of um, what could be explored first. Uh, then we would discuss that there are two needs. So there are these fixed mappings between schemas uh, that are more permanent and easier to manage. And, and we already have these public, publicly available for Tadwick, for example, ABCD, Darwin Core mapping. But then um, in parallel to these, we need mappings between vocabularies. And this can be um, much more complicated when, when uh, you use these external vocabularies with, uh, for example, extended uh, measurement or fact uh, Darwin co-extension. Uh, then we discussed that uh, there should be more tight um, collaborations, um, or we should uh, be build more tight collaboration with RDA groups. Uh, one of those would be I adopt frame uh, group uh, in our RDA, and and then there's also biodiversity group um, that I think Potter adding is one of those uh, conveners. So we should maybe poke voter and, and ask if, if that group could reactivate. And this would then create nice uh, kind of timeline for us. So if we could work more, more um, with our colleagues in biodiversity uh, domain and, and we could present something in RDA and then also come to Tadwick and present what we've achieved uh, in that field. Others would be those uh, EOS projects, uh, one of them being Fairco for EOS that I presented. Um, and then also 
now came to my mind that there is a uh, different kinds of EOSC task forces, and I'm also part of a ta EOSC task force for uh, semantic interoperability. So we could uh, maybe see if there are synergies and, and people who could contribute to our work as well, or if the results could be used with our work. Then there are global initi initiatives like Core Data and DDI that um, may have useful resources that we can refer to. What tools and standards are they using for mappings? Um, yeah, we listed, we mentioned that it's important to make these mappings fair, uh, similar to data or software, and define um, what these fair enabling resources are and, and uh, if we could find a format, minimum format uh, for publishing these crosswalks, um, we could use iAdopt um, framework as a vocabulary for expressing this uh, possibly at least between variables, this, this would work. Then there's MOD, metadata for ontology description and publication. And I think there is some sort of minimum metadata already defined. I'm not sure if it's published yet, but at least the, the early version is there. SSSOM was mentioned, RDF and DDI. Uh, what else? We talked about so many things. Reaching out to other communities through RDA and biodiversity uh, RDA group. Um, questions to the outside are metadata for the mapping. Are there metadata models or, or standards or minimum requirements for mappings and standards? What are the output formats? Uh, and is it possible to just publish the table format and create metadata for that? But the output formats that we listed were RDF, SSSOM, SSSOM. XSLT, um, yeah, was there something else? Uh, we were thinking of, of possible um, next steps. Um, so how could we make these mappings available? Is it through GitHub? Could we have some example template, how to do that? Um, so it, they could be versioned and you could refer back to them. Um, re where would this registry of mappings be or is it with Tadwick or with anybody who contributes? Do they publish those mappings themselves? Um, or what would DBIF do? Um, important would be if we have a re reference implementation to publish that. Um, and also, is it possible to describe what is not possible to map? That was one crucial question. And then we talk about the licenses and there needs to be discussion whether it's CC license or some more technical open but machine actionable license. And yeah, maybe, maybe um, we will include other details that I may forget to our <laughs> documentation. Thanks. Thank you. And I, I must mention that, uh, like, just looking at the notes, I'm really impressed on on how well all of you did with notes taking, unlike my group. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, we, uh, uh, as you said, yeah, there are a lot of uh, thoughts and ideas and uh, that. Uh, went into this, uh, so we are certainly going to use those for the upcoming meetings of the of the task group. Uh, yeah, which, which is a good segue. So I'm I'm just putting myself next. <laughs> um, so for the for the task group charter group, we were uh, quite small round. Uh, Stan, Peggy, and me. Um, I just gave a brief summary on the draft so far, uh, and we had a bit of discussions and. Uh, some thoughts that uh, came up that, that were not really covered yet with the current draft. So, uh, for instance, one, one of the uh, the issues was that uh, how do we handle um, mappings that are uh, like on the outside of Tedwig pointing to Tedwig standards? Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, 
uh, we we need to be aware of that uh, uh, that there are also some where we cannot I mean we, we couldn't uh, force anybody anyway to to use a certain way but but also uh, we, we don't have uh, yeah any way to to recommend how they should uh, present their uh, mappings so we we need a way to um, keep track of those mappings um, this was also a topic I had in the break uh, with um, somebody else um, regarding uh, yeah mapping from other standards to Darwin core for instance so the the, the maintainers of those standards uh, uh, need to be aware that there might be mappings that they haven't created but of course it's still a useful resource so it should we should be able to at least point to them uh, and ideally if the um, uh, uh, yeah, if the, the framework that Hannah presented in the, in the previous session, the, the metadata schema and crossword registry uh, was ready, that would be a good resource just to say, okay, we'll just register the standard, the mappings in there, and then we can just point to the registry. Um, and another topic that we, we talked about was how to handle uh, already existing, not just mapping, but, but existing conversions. Uh, a lot of people are converting data from one format to another. And of course, it's also really useful to share those uh, to avoid doing duplicate work uh, just beyond just presenting the standards. But if, if you have a working workflow that converts from, from one standard to another, that's of course also really useful and uh, needs to be addressed in the, the yeah recommendation as well. Um, and then at the end, I just yeah uh, uh, did some more practical stuff. Uh, Stan gave me access to the Patrick Tag repository. <laughs> Steve, just just to let you know that I'm going to create a directory there for uh, for the mappings task group. <laughs> so um, and then uh, yeah, I continued writing on the, on the draft. Uh, so we didn't write any notes in there, but uh, many of the changes are in the uh, draft of the charter, which is linked. So if, uh, yeah, if you want to uh, uh, read through that and express your thoughts, give recommendations, please go ahead and do that. All right, uh, next group, uh, who wants? Hmm? All right, yeah. I just wanted to add that one of the things that I'm seeing out of this is that this probably is going to end up evolving into an interest group. This is a very, um, it's a relevant topic to Tadwig in an ongoing way. I think we'll take the reports that come out of this that will be specified in this charter and what we're doing now, but you know, don't take too long. I think it, it will just, you know, simple is good and we'll just um, evolve this into something that will be a focal point for this work in Tadwig ongoing. Uh, and it will probably have many years of activity as, as this kind of work evolves. So just wanted to, you know, sort of give a longer horizon for this. <laughs> good point. Thanks for adding this. Yeah, I wanted to mention that. Uh, and indeed, we, we did have a discussion on whether this should be a task group or an interest group and a good, uh, yeah, uh, there, were, there were good reasons for both. And so we started with a task group and we can always transfer it into an interest group later on. Okay, uh, next group that wants to speak, anybody of you? <laughs> We were uh, just a very small group of, of local um, people, so we, we sort of focused more on local issues, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> to some extent. But, it, but... Uh, no, that's right. <laughs> we didn't. We weren't very good at notes either. Um, I have to say. Um, so we started uh, talking about. Um, or I'll set the context first. So. Um, uh, we had um, representation from um, the Western Australian uh, team working on biodiversity uh, infrastructure and, uh, of course, um, also from the Atlas Living Australia. So we're both aggregators. We're, we're um, working um, together. We're looking for better ways to work together, more effective ways to work together and share um, uh, not just data, but also knowledge and and um, tooling. So um, 
I guess our discussion was more around uh, this local context rather than the, the standards, although, of course, the, the standards are important in, in doing that. Um, so um, we started talking about uh, genomic information and, and uh, common interests in genomic information and how we um, are doing that in the Atlas. Also, um, uh, sort of where the Western Australian team are up to with that. And uh, moved on to um, uh, other types of data that we're both dealing with and how we're uh, collecting, storing and sharing those data. So. Um, I guess we, we sort of uh, went a little bit off script <laughs> to some extent and didn't make particularly good notes, I have to say. We had a great conversation and um, and it's going to result in some really good collaboration going forwards, which um, is uh, hopefully going to be beneficial. Um, and we will document what we find from it <laughs> and share that back into the broader community. So. Well, thank you. And the new issue that you went off script. I mean, that this is why there's a workshop, uh, open space, just to to see where the ideas uh, lead us. Uh, next, uh, maybe we want to get a report from from the online group. Uh, as I heard, Ben wanted to talk about this. Uh, yeah, you should be ben, ready. Can you guys hear me? Are we good? Yes, yeah, no, but we hear How's you. Everybody doing? This is this is fun. All right, awesome, great. <laughs> Thanks, Holly. So we uh, we talked a lot about what you guys have already mentioned. A um, couple things to have a reporting specification. So it's the re central repository is great. Like we need a central repository where you can look up these mappings as they've been done. It would be also nice to have some sort of standard for reporting these things. Um, the present, there's a presentation aspect and then a machine readable aspect. And I think there have been some ways to look up the, the presentation aspect, you know, the context, making sure it's within the context of the term you're looking at for better understanding. But there's probably another level to this that would be nice. <clears throat> and then, which is right, the documentation. And then, um, help me here, Holly. And then the guidance documentation. I know we've talked about that for the, um, the tag, the tech. Um, to implement some sort of best sort of guidance, best practice documentation on the Tadwig website. We just have some general information. We had some people in our group who were very new to Tadwig and also very new to SCOS mappings. And they would, you know, I mentioned SCOS and they didn't know what I was talking about, right? And I sort of had to back up a little bit, which is completely understandable. We all use acronyms quite a bit, um, like all the time. And so, um, but it'd be nice to have something there to sort of introductory information about SCOS and how the mappings work and then require as part of the ratification process. It's about it. It's about it. Uh, uh, ben, your, your microphone was, was it really was cutting out a bit? Could you please repeat? Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't get <laughs> okay. the last sentence. So I, the um, I think it's about it. Um, that the guidance documentation on the on the Tabrook website would help onboard people up with just the SCOS terminology and how these mappings work and some examples and just sort of get them moving down the pathway because they didn't, our group members had a hard time figuring out where to start. And they, they know they wanted to map, they know they wanted to do it, but how would that look, how would that work and what are those basic concepts to understanding how the whole thing you know, connects together would be good. All right, sure. thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, Holly wanted to add something of course. <laughs> Hi, Ben. I'm just going to add a Please couple do. things for Mark. Um, as part of that, we talked a lot about kind of what the internal repository infrastructure would needs are for how Tadwig could store this information. And I think it relates really well to what Stan just said about the longevity of the idea of this um, and maintaining those mappings over time. Because um, one of our group members was the person particularly interested in doubling core mapping. And that uh, I think relates well to how we talk about map to external standards because we might not necessarily ever do a complete Dublin core mapping from Dublin core to us but every single one of our standards might have terms that they're doing on the opposite direction and having a place to put those so that someone that is looking at Dublin core would be able to pull up everything we've done that relates to Dublin core um, and then 
one thing that another group already mentioned are the gaps. So the things that don't have a match and being able to clearly say that and then rolling up a level, the kind of larger landscape of how the standards as a whole relate to each other and which ones have been mapped, which ones we know can't be mapped and how they're used together, adding that into this kind of overall documentation as well. Okay, thank you. Now we're going over to the group about uh, mapping versus uh, importing. <laughs> thank you. Um, hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm coming here from Ocean Tracking Network and for a bit of context, I didn't know that Tadwig existed until about two weeks ago. I didn't know what any of this was until my manager, John, suggested I come here. So I think he's online. So hi, John, if, um, <laughs> if you're here. But um, uh, one thing that we do at Ocean Tracking Network is a lot of telemetry work, and that doesn't really have standards. So we were trying to think, what, should we borrow standards or not? And then I heard Steve's as saying the same question as should we borrow, you know, how or how should we deal with borrowing versus creating your own standards or uh, mappings or terms. So that's what we were discussing. And from the start, similar to what um, the last person just mentioned, is that uh, it was very nebulous. We weren't sure where to start, but it was clear that um, there's a lot of different ways that various Tadwick standards are borrowing terms from other groups versus minting new terms. So there's lots of different ways of borrowing or creating new terms. And um, that, that's kind of where we started our discussion. And from there, we kind of put together a few considerations. So there's redundancy of duplicate terms that uh, um, often appear across various standards. And um, that's something you need to keep in mind if you're borrowing or creating a term. You know, you don't wanna create something that already exists. Um, also, the second consideration we came up with was how to deal with the stability of borrowed terms. So um, if, if a term is revised and from the source where you pull it from, uh, do you update to match that borrowed term or do you keep what you've been working with or has like what you've been working with has it deviated a little bit from the original definition? Um, so that's the second big consideration we came up with is kind of how do you how do you deal with that? Third consideration is kind of similar to that is is it just more stable to mint your own term from the start? Um, and maybe you could link to an existing term that's in another standard as like a, um, I suppose a, a guideline that you base your own term off of. Um, and then um, our fourth consideration was uh, you need to make sure that your terms that you either borrow or have created uh, is understandable in all languages that you're working in. So um, you need to keep these labels controlled across as many languages as possible that this biodiversity work is taking place in. And then um, finally, the last thing that we think you need to consider if you're <coughs> borrowing or minting your own term is uh, 